Oh, no, I would like to uh, add something that has occurred to me. What do you think of this? When a uh, super black hole gets uh, even more super big, or perhaps even any black hole, well, I see them as shedding um, plasma, in a sense, something like plasma that under the extreme pressure where the uh, molecules are forced so much together there is a transformation an escape a bit like steam comes off uh, boiling water and uh, uh, you think, oh, it's vanished. Well, of course it hasn't. It's just in the room and uh, you find it on the cold surface of the, the the corner walls of the house and that's where the black mould grows, of course, because the moisture is condensed again back to water. So too, there is this recycling of uh, the substance of the universe which in its elemental form at that considered level is just like plasma. I'm tempted to say like the soup of space, but rather more richly um, endowed than we think. Obviously it has light, electromagnetic waves, crowding, in every from every direction it's every every point in space is absolutely piccadilly circus as regards transit electromagnetic waves going through it in order in all directions so to speak always from from nearby stars to distant galaxies you know the odd photon once a fortnight whatever it is from that particular galaxy say or something but it's an absolute hive of m magnetic forces if you like and gravitational forces presumably I mean we haven't really sort of identified those in so, so add to that now whatever the matter is is forced to become, to escape um, the confines of the gravity. If the pressure builds up enough, the resistance, the energy that's in every atom of creation dissipates out of the black hole. It's not of a form where the gravity holds it. And it's not of uh, literally a size that can't seep through the incredibly dense a material that's wrapped around it and crushing in on it. Hmm. Well, I've got a well about a forty second pause here. Um <laughs> sorry about that. So I'm just uh filling it in for a moment. Where are we? Thirty seconds of the way through. I think I can just about any moment now. So it radiates out, out of the black hole, in all directions, into space. And how far it sheds, I don't know. 
but it enriches what we see as the void. The void which is really this incredible quasi-plasma of magnetic waves, gravitational waves, if there are such things. I mean, I don't know. Do you? Uh, how is this force um, transmitted uh, through space? Magnetism and so forth. So it could be that the abora rurialis, you know, is is dense matter compared to this quasi plasma of space. But it's not nothing. And put it all together, given the immensity of the volume of space, it amounts to perhaps something like your dark matter and your dark energy that you can't register on your gross machine. But it's the very life source, the food of all the matter that then comes into being. And this is continuously happening, not at strategic times, a big bang and, uh, y you know, all coming back to some massive black hole and then a massive big bang again. It's happening continuously within our galaxies and of the galaxies themselves when they sort of seem to become dominated by a black hole. And perhaps it has to be very big indeed to give out an enormous amount of such quasi-plasma. Or perhaps it doesn't have to be. Any black hole sends it out proportionately to its mass. Of course, we could imagine black holes, therefore, ultimately getting smaller over time unless they meet up with other matter to burn off in the same way or to squeeze in the same way, I suppose I really mean. So I'm talking about a continuous creation. Um, and it could even be on a local level of the black hole breathing out this plasma, which reforms the basis of atoms and molecules. Perhaps in the neighborhood of the galaxy, which is then drawn into making stars and perhaps more black holes or drawn back into the original black hole and goes round the cycle again, either locally on the nearest black hole or the a bigger one that's not so far away. In astronomical terms, of course. So it could be that the immensity of space between the galaxies is um, that the porridge of the void is not so dense. You know, it could vary. It could be much denser, or or if or if this material is streaming out at speed. Um, Perhaps it still varies as we go through the universe from one place to another, depending on where the streams are flowing out from, crossing your present location. I think I'm saying it's a solar wind.
or something like the solar wind that we get. At least in some ways. But perhaps much finer. Hmm. Hmm. Thank you, Heavenly Dad. I just had a note that I'm thinking occurs to me that perhaps mass tends to be lost with speed. Um, simplistically, for instance, perhaps it's the case that something moving faster than the speed of light has negative mass or no mass or less mass that it leaves its mass characteristic behind or does not include the mass characteristic until it collects again with other waves or the two forces come together and you get a wave and the wave is what we see to be matter um, a sudden uh, but continuous combination of waves coming together so that the matter does seem to appear and disappear and reappear in different places and it's a spectacular show of lights and that what we see as permanent matter is or can be simply a continuous performance creation and dissolution going on. I'm way beyond what I can imagine comprehensively and consistently now. Because, of course, we're theorizing And uh, the amazing thing about theorizing is we necessarily do it partially. So there are these appearing and vanishing ideas of what could be, but it requires a lot of other consistencies with it around such. And as we attend to that, we lose track of what we were attending to. Thought. Is an astonishing mystical phenomena. Mystical in the sense that we don't have a comprehension of something that's analogous to it that we can handle from our direct experience of the senses. And yet, the being of thought suggests possibilities to what we can manifest relevant to the senses that we have. 
and even what the senses can become. It's a bit like when you're dreaming. It is probably the same as when you're dreaming. What you're at that moment thinking is the reality that you're in. So we choose to control the mind. in such a way that we perceive it as a blessing in its consequence for the life or the dream that we have. So the importance of positive thought in the sense of In harmony, what we choose to suppose heaven to be. And it's that which transforms our being into what we become. Choose you this day whom you will serve. Choose with great care. By which I mean loving, creative devotion. Divine purpose. The which we can become sensitive to. It's in our potential being because we're children of God. And holding that view is our salvation. In truth, our being. So we mature by the grace and goodness of our Heavenly Dad, ever within us, ever our example, our model, to whom is our total allegiance. Because of his care and kindness, through all our coming into being. This sounds so grand, and it is grand, but it's familiar because it's what every parent has, or rather is, the spirit of creativity. that they have inherited and come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. We love him because he first loved us into being and he's faithful and true, he does not leave us. He brings us up the loving parent, the perfect parent. So is our God. Love you, Dad. You may understand it better as love you, Mum. Or perhaps both and neither, or both. Dearest friend, eternal friend, I will never leave you, nor forsake you. Thank you, Heavenly Dad.